Hello everybody, welcome again to the Ginger on Wheels channel, where today we're going to be reviewing this Ultron X3 Pro electric scooter. This 60 volt scooter has dual 3000 watt motors and a 45 amp hour LG battery. Top speed around 55 miles per hour, but it feels suspicious because the price tag is curiously low. So let's roll the intro and inspect this scooter a little bit closer. If you're a bigger rider that's been looking for something that can handle your weight, keep watching because this is your video. Pop the tire? Is that what that was? This scooter is curiously tame on the first two speed modes, but as you can see on this third speed mode, it is ridiculously fast. So most scooters, most high quality scooters coming out nowadays have three components. You have got the drivetrain component, aka the motors and the wires. Oh, don't go. Then you have got the battery. And lastly, the technology. Things like uh, traction control, ABS, smart BMS, maybe a really nice display with all sorts of cool features on it. Things like that. And then you have this scooter, the Ultron X3 Pro, which is basically just two components and two thirds of the price. You have the battery component, really nice 60 volt, 45 amp hour LG battery. And then you have the motor component, some nice powerful motors on this thing. Then they just left the technology and features department behind. This scooter goes way too fast for this suspension and tire setup. I'll tell you that right now. The reason it has this much power though is not for the top speed, which it can do though. It's for hill climbing power for heavier riders. So we just did some speed testing on the Ultron X3. Anything above 40 on this thing feels like suicide. But you can see why it feels so unstable here. The contact patch, when I did a skid, there's three very distinct thin little lines of contact. And in the middle between the lines, that's just not touching the ground at all. So if I'm doing a left-hand corner, that third line over there is not touching the ground. You have two skinny lines of contact on the road and it's just so sketchy. I can't believe that, ugh. I can't believe that I rode my original Wolf Warrior 11 Plus for so long with off-road tires on the road. After having ridden with street and hybrid tires for so long, off-road tires are just a chore. All right, let's take an up-close look at our Ultron X3 Pro real quick. Here's the grip. They have a nice little palm flare out on them. They do rotate though. There's no uh, actual like screw to tighten them. This throttle right here is not the latest throttle. I pointed out some minor compatibility issues with this throttle, so they have updated it to a newer, nicer, better one. We have our single dual button here, which will activate single motor or dual motors. Eco turbo button, which basically just cuts the power in any given speed mode in half. We have a key right here, which you can use to uh, lock your scooter. You put the key in and turn it and believe it or not that voltage readout did just turn on you just can't see it at all in the sunlight on this little module right here we have an on off switch for the headlights we do have a blinker switch but the scooter does not have blinkers so just ignore that this horn button right here is hooked up to a nice big powerful horn down here Whew. it's the same size as the horn on the wolf warrior but that frequency is intense 
And again, the grip right here, which I gotta scoot up because I was just riding. And these brakes, these are the DY Island brakes. They're very powerful brakes, but I don't like this little protrusion right here. I have a hard time switching from brake to throttle sometimes because of this little protrusion on the brake lever here. Nice sleek stem on the front that says Ultron. And my smart fingerprint activated lock that I just strap on the front here. That's a folding lock that I sell at pevoutlet.com. It's got this clamp style mechanism right here with two clamps. It does look thicker than the two clamp system on the uh, Varla Eagle 1 or the Zero 11 scooters. This design still isn't the greatest, especially when there's a screw right there, which I don't really know what it does, but I don't want to find out. Just make sure it's tight. <laughs> And to fold the scooter, you just pull these, you pull this tab out and you pull the other one out and you slide this collar up and then the whole stem folds down like that. We have a couple little uh, Wally -E headlights down here, which look like they'd be really bright, but disappointingly, they're not that bright. They do something. They're not as bright as the Wolf Warrior headlights, not even close. They're not exactly that bright. They throw really far, but they also throw in people's eyes. I like lights that are up here and shine down. This deck though, let's talk about the real estate on this deck. This is huge. Now I know it has a 60 volt, 45 amp hour battery. I swear it's supposed to have deck lights. This scooter is for big people, 100%. It's got a 300 pound max payload. It's got 2000 pound springs in the front and back, which are a little too stiff for me, but they'll be great for heavier riders. Like if you're a 250, 300 pound rider, this is your scooter, I think. When you hit the brakes, it has some LED brake lights that light up back here. And when you turn on the lights, you do get some cool ambient lights that roll along the side here. I don't know if you can see that at all in the, in the light. So it does have a bunch of cool features, as you can see, but they're all really old features. Like this, this uh, voltage readout thing and this lights module, this has gotta be five-year-old technology by now. The lights are a nice little touch, but the swing arms are a bit primitive and I just don't see. P.S. It is supposed to have a front fender on here. I cracked it off. It's completely my fault. It does have nice big 160 millimeter brakes though dual piston hydraulic front and back. It comes with these off-road tires, which I'm really not a fan of for riding on the street because you have like three little contact points with the road. That's just not good for gripping around corners, but you can't really ride it off-road because these springs, these 2000 pound springs are just too stiff. There's a bit of a crisscross in design right there. They're not sure if they want to go road or off-road, but it works good on the roads and just like semi off-road train. Like if you need to roll across the lawn or through some gravel, stuff like this, you'll be fine. It's got dual GX16-3 charge ports down here. It comes with two two amp chargers, which actually pull one and a half amps I tested. And the pins down here are wired backwards. So you can't use any other 60 volt chargers on this scooter. You have to use the two chargers that come with the scooter. So charging this thing at three amps with the two included chargers is gonna Huh, that's weird, I forgot to keep talking. It'll take you about 14 or 15 hours. So in speed mode three, in single eco mode, the scooter goes, what is this? Uh, 15 miles per hour, 14. Put it into dual turbo mode, and the thing goes 55 miles per hour. So I'm not sure how relevant the speed modes really are. <laughs> this is a perfect road for top speed testing. Okay, I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. We, this is as tight as it can turn at this speed. Okay. The suspension gets super duper chattery at top speed. Like the tires barely make contact with the ground. And I tested all the different rebound settings on the suspension, which you can do. It's got a little rebound knob that doesn't seem to do a whole lot until the very end. But on top of the super chattery suspension, you're also riding on the off-road tires, which as I showed you when we were stopped, just basically have like three little contact points with the road. Well, we are really testing this scooter right now. I've had it pinned at full throttle for almost a minute. The tires, I feel so bad. They're literally just skipping along the ground. All right, that's, that's gotta be the worst endurance test I've put a scooter through in a long time. The electronics in this thing are gotta be like close to melting right now. But with the 45 amp hour battery in this thing, you can just pull like that all day. If your scooter doesn't melt doing really strong pulls like that, one of the main concerns is the long-term damage it does to the battery. Because when the controllers are asking for 100 amps and you're pulling max amps out of the battery, you're really stressing the cells, especially on some of these Chinese scooters where they're using really cheap cells. And you stress the cells over and over to the point where they can catch fire or they just degrade and they won't hold a charge or they won't charge to full. But when you have a bigger battery, you have a lot more cells in parallel. So when you're asking for 100 amps, there's more cells able to provide those amps and it stresses each individual cell a lot 
less. So with a 45 amp hour battery in this thing, you can really do that pin throttle thing for a long time, which is kind of what I wanted to show off. So when I was doing 50 down the road back there, the tires were skipping along, the suspension was chattering, but I wasn't getting speed wobbles, so that's good. The geometry of the scooter checks out. It can do those speeds, but it, yeah, I wouldn't do a corner at those speeds. This scooter is for somebody who weighs 275 plus pounds, just wants to cruise like maybe 30 miles to work and back, and wants a scooter that's not gonna break on them. The suspension on this thing is beast. 2,000 pound springs in the front and back. You really gotta jump to make them flex. As with most scooters, the headlights are there, but they're a bit disappointing. I recommend picking up some fire lights from PEVoutlet.com. Awesome scooter headlights. Now I said this scooter was good for heavier riders who had like a 30 mile commute and just wanted kind of a tank scooter. But there is one caveat. You cannot ride this thing in the rain basically at all. I talked to Ultron. They said specifically like, don't even try to ride it in the rain. I told them there was rain in the forecast. Like, do you want me to try and film a video in the rain or should we just wait till it's dry? And they said, absolutely under no conditions should you ride this thing in the rain. And I looked at the scooter a little closer and I think I see why. Let's check it out a little closer again. You hear the suspension? It's doing that by itself. That's the, uh, the rebound on the suspension. Yeah, the suspension is not good at all. It's got really heavy springs and that's about all it's good for. Look at the quality control. They like cross threaded in the taillight so one end protrudes out farther than the other. So if you were to ride this thing in the rain, the rain would come down here and it would fall in this lovely compartment right here. Very well designed compartment that says Ultron but it happens to have the controllers inside. And there's a crack that runs along the top that's perfect for water to soak into. So if water was falling onto this thing, I think it would just run into the controller compartment right in there and it would just fill it up and game over. I don't think you could ride this thing in the rain. It's unfortunate. They could have made a cover that went around the sides and maybe covered the top a little better with a gasket, but they just kind of didn't. They just made a little plastic cover, plopped it on top with some screws, called it good. But again, on this scooter, you're literally just paying for like the motors and the battery and those cool lights. Everything else is just recycled parts from scooters we've seen from five years ago. With that rear suspension, I can either have the rebound knob cranked so that the rebound's really slow, but then it makes that creaking noise all the way up, or I can have the rebound really fast, but then it makes this weird knocking noise. It just kind of goes like every time I jump up and down on it. So I don't know if it's just the linkage, the geometry for the linkages or if it's the actual suspension unit itself. But again, no technology on this scooter. They're just like, hey, it's in the shape of swing arms and we can fit a spring in there. Chuck some springs in. So this is the kind of medium to light off-roading that I said you could do with this scooter. Actually, this is a bit more technical than I would like. The thing is, it's got the tires for it. It just doesn't really have the maneuverability for it. And the suspension is garbaggio for off-roading, I gotta say. Nice little hill right here. Let's test it on this hill. Dang, ferocious hill climbing power. Just spitting up rocks and gravel. This thing would haul a heavier rider up any hill. I'm convinced. If you're 300 pounds and you have a super steep hill like San Francisco Hill, this will get you up. I can't believe that I've been riding this thing around for so long and it still has 61 volts left. The battery is very much the redeeming quality of the scooter. I feel like I could probably ride around all day on this thing. Oh, there's some kids on bikes up here. Let's go buy them on the scooter. I was these kids once on this exact road. I could tell though, if I had about an extra 50 pounds on me, this thing would be a lot more plush feeling. It's a scooter for big boys. Consider this scooter as a serious all around option if you're in the market for scooters and you weigh 230 pounds or more. But also consider this scooter if you just want something really powerful with a giant battery and you don't have a lot of money. Keep in mind you're sacrificing all of the technology and creature comforts that we've come to learn and love over the last few years. But you save hundreds of dollars. So, I mean, what's that worth to you? To me personally, I'll pay the extra money to get a better scooter. But I know for everybody, scooters aren't the number one top priority in their lives and they just want something cheap to get around with for fun. Maybe you're also saving up for a gaming PC. I don't know. I know I'm not, so I'll blow all my money on scooters every day. I cannot believe this thing still has battery. That's wild. Just the sketchiest suspension setup alive though. It's only really safe up to about 28, 30 miles per hour. Anything over that, sketchy with cheese. Okay guys, I gotta go. The sun's going down and I still have to go home, pack up all my stuff and drive home and edit this video. So thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.